welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The CEO of St. Jude Hospital assures that efforts are underway to recommission a key piece of equipment. A donation of medical supplies and equipment has been received from the diaspora. And new pathways are created at the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College. The management of St. Jude Hospital has taken steps to ensure that patients have access to medical imaging services. Over the past months, the hospital's radiology capabilities have been affected with its X-ray machine damaged. However, the chief executive officer says solutions have been employed pending the recommissioning of the equipment. Chief Executive Officer of the St. Jude Hospital, Diana Henry Ernest, assures the public that the hospital is working assiduously to have the X-ray machine recommissioned in the shortest possible time. The X-ray machine has been out of service since the 30th of March 2021. Henry Ernest, noting the importance of X-ray services to patients, indicated that in the interim, they are able to obtain X-ray services at Medical Imaging Inc., the St. Jude Hospital, to aid in the inconvenience caused, will facilitate transportation of patients to Medical Imaging Inc. St. Jude is very much aware of the importance of X-ray. X-ray is one of the ways that we can diagnose problems, so we definitely cannot do without X-ray. So because our machine is down at the moment and we are waiting for it to be rectified, we send our patients to Medical Imaging, that's just in Viewfort, and what we do, we absorb that cost. Sometimes, if, um, if medical imaging is not available at the time, we send our patients to suffer. But most of the times, our x-rays are being done at medical imaging. The chief executive officer explained that the relevant personnel have already been contacted and the hospital is making headway in recommissioning the equipment. She assured that the hospital will soon be able to once again provide the high-quality diagnostic service to the people of the South. Presently, we are at the X-ray um, department where this X-ray machine is the one that is effective and um, that's the part that we are sourcing right now. Um, this X-ray machine has been down from the 30th of March this year and we have been doing everything in our power to have um, the technicians from Santo Domingo to diagnose, troubleshoot the problem that we are having and they have already given us a quotation. And at this moment, all we are waiting for is for the part to arrive here and they will come and install it for us. The St. Jude Hospital remains committed to providing the best medical services to its patients. A donation of medical supplies and equipment, meantime, has been received from the diaspora to benefit the nation's senior citizens. Here's Hermody Mark with the details. As the country continues to cope with restraints inflicted by COVID-19, allies are stepping up to offer assistance. A radio station in New York, Watch Radio, and the members of the diaspora contributed commodes, wheelchairs, and supplies to assist the daily operations of five elderly care homes in St. Lucia. The donation was presented to the recipients by Ambassador for Diaspora Affairs, Her Excellency Dr. Jocelyn Fetcher. My office is so proud of Watch Radio for the contributions. I mean, I'm proud totally of all the diaspora, of what they're doing. Um, they have been doing from since this COVID pandemic started in St. Lucia. They have just been sending stuff to St. Lucia for schools, for children's homes, for the um, people who are in, in, in dire straits. They answer the call. You see the long lines at Western Union and MoneyGram. They have just been sending and sending and sending. And I am overwhelmed with gratitude and so is the government and people of St. Lucia. The donation from Watch Radio and the members of the diaspora was facilitated by the St. Lucia Social Development Fund with support from the St. Lucia and Seaports Authority. Anya Edwin is the Resource Mobilization Officer at the SSDF. The SSDF continues to be very grateful, very much available as well to all our diaspora counterparts. Every person in the diaspora who thinks it's necessary or who see the need to provide support to St. Lucians at home and even within their respective diaspora nations as well. We have five recipients today, five homes in St. Lucia and um, 
I know for a fact that they are grateful. I was speaking to one of the recipients earlier from the St. Lucie's home and he expressed how much of a dire need it is for them to, for them now within the various homes and being aware of what items are in these boxes and even the wheelchairs as well. It is just very um, motivating. It's very, it's an opportunity to welcome a relationship with them, especially watch radio and to take care of our people within these homes. Peter Diodoni said Slasper is pleased to be able to assist with the facilitation of such a necessary donation. Being the principal warehouser for the state, um, Slasper is happy to, to partner with the Office of the Prime Minister and through your office, Ambassador, um, um, Ambassador um, Fletcher and the Diaspora Affairs Unit in facilitating, of course, not only the receipt of these items, but also um, transferring them to the various homes. And um, we are happy to assist in whatever way. Sister Annie Reno expressed gratitude on behalf of the recipients and encouraged the donors to continue the good work. When uh, Watch Radio embarked on this mission, uh, we thought it would be a quick delivery. Uh, the pandemic has proved otherwise in terms of delay, but nevertheless, uh, you were persistent and you have persevered. And so I would like to thank you for your perseverance. Thank you for all those who collaborated uh, with you. Thank you for all those you encourage uh, to donate uh, towards uh, these institutions. The recipients include St. Lucy's Home, the Marian Home, Cornerstone, Mission of Charity, and the Villa St. Joseph. From the Government Information Service, I am Huma Mark reporting. Sections of St. Lucia's workforce displaced by effects of the COVID-19 pandemic may soon have a new avenue to reroute themselves to alternative in-demand careers. The Sir Arthur Lewis Community College is preparing a suite of tailored short-term courses that will provide mature prospects with new marketable skills. Principal Dr. Keith Nurse says this new venture will be added to a list of other similar offerings under the college's ongoing lifelong learning program and a TVET. What we want to do for those people who are um, probably displaced, particularly in the tourism sector and some of the retail and other sectors, mm -hmm. is to curate a process whereby we offer them certificates in a very um, um, packaged way. Okay. So we have in mind uh, training, for example, for the blue economy. So what skills do you need to, to have for the blue economy? And so we start mm -hmm. with an understanding That's of what cool. the marketplace requires, and then we build out those skills. Um, in four to five very um, well packaged um, training components. Dr. Nurse adds that the certification obtained will carry credits transferable to future degree programs. So you get a certificate. In fact, you would get what we call a digital certificate and in effect it would be a nano degree. Now that nano degree is transferable so that you can then use that as a basis to come back to the college if you want to now go on to do your associate degree or your bachelor's degree. This and other recent initiatives of the college are consistent with a thrust toward educational innovation. In this vein, the college will be hosting a thought festival dubbed and think on 15th June, the 30th anniversary of the passing of Sir Arthur Lewis. The virtual event is aimed at propagating new thinking, idea creation and strategic action on the globalization and development agenda. We felt it was really important to pull together uh, a stellar cast of academics, intellectuals, thought leaders, business people from around the world. Um, so it's a one day event and we're calling it a thought festival because the objective is not to be, uh, it, this is not a webinar, this is not a Zoom session. We're running it in studio at HTS nice. and we are making it uh, very accessible to anyone and everyone from all parts of the world. The inaugural event being held in honor of the life and legacy of Sir Arthur Lewis 
will have his work woven into the program of keynote addresses and panels that focus on areas including green and blue sustainable development as a solution for climate action, development of healthy equity beyond COVID-19, digital education, and industrial upgrading. The Caribbean community now has a cohort of early childhood educators with new skills to conduct online training of children between the ages of 3 to 8 years old. More from Toussaint King English Francis. A recently concluded workshop trained 40 early childhood practitioners from across the community in delivering quality education at a distance. It was organized and implemented through a collaboration involving the CARICOM Secretariat, the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, and the Caribbean Child Development Center of the University of the West Indies Open Campus. Speaking at the closing ceremony, Program Manager for Human Resource Development at the CARICOM Secretariat, Dr. Lord Bristol, commended the collaboration that provided certification of the skills the participants obtained. Uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about the relationship with UNESCO is that they're in this experience focus on really providing opportunities that are relevant and in time to the needs of the community that they're serving here in the Caribbean. Thank you to Cecile, your team, Catherine and Nicole and your institution of UWE Open Campus for really putting service to the region first. We could not have done this. The expertise resides there and we could not have done this without you. Main facilitator of the workshop, consultant and former early childhood coordinator of the UWI Open Campus, Miss Catherine O'Sullivan, told the participants it was a pleasure for her to spend four weeks of training with them. Um, just want to say congratulations at the end of these workshops. Um, thank you for attending them or catching the recordings, doing the assignments, sharing your thoughts with us, sharing your, I mean, basically your whole world with us. Um, and I definitely can say that I've learned more from you than you have from me. So it's just been a wonderful time. Head of the Caribbean Child Development Center and Director of the Consortium for Social Development and Research at the University of the West Indies Open Campus in Jamaica, Ms. Cecile Manot, also congratulated the cohort of early childhood practitioners for successfully completing the training program. The Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor has officially granted approval to the Overseas Engineering and Construction Company of Taiwan to commence construction on the Union Roundabout project, which is estimated at 1.7 million EC dollars and not 5 million EC dollars, as is being reported in sections of the local media. The Union Roundabout construction forms part of the larger Marisil Grand Riviere Union Road Rehabilitation Project, another road improvement and maintenance program phase four. The project is designed to address congestion and traffic flow challenges stemming from the activity at the Dimpolet Louisi Primary School and nearby commercial establishments. A new drop-off zone will be constructed to accommodate the drop-off and pick-up of students, staff, and support services for the Dame Paulette Louisi Primary School. This will be further complemented by construction of slip lanes to accommodate the free flow of traffic not associated to the school and nearby businesses. All of these plans were developed in consultation with the school and other stakeholders over a series of planning meetings. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayole. Here at St. Lucia Distillers, we produce an award-winning range of rums and rum products. We export our rums to the Caribbean, North America and Europe. Standards facilitate our entry into overseas markets. In the rum business, it is critical that our distillers and blenders get it right. St. Lucia Distillers is HACCP certified. We use two standards from SLBS, the standard for labeling of pre-packaged foods, SLNS 1-3-2014 and the national specification for rum, SLNS 12, 2003. We are also a registered member of the West Indies Rum and Spirit Producers Association, WISPA. 
SLBS ensures that we are up to standard and world class. This message is brought to you by the Commonwealth Standards Network. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Autor General, Monsieur Madame, Department qui est responsable de formation à gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, ensemble puis télévision nationale puis à NTN, Capuzato Nouvelle Aquayol, Capuzato Primus Hutchinson. Mon Parlement. Et le représentatif pour Sofouye et Fosse Jacques, Honorable Herod Stanislas, chaque travail bien pour faire assurer que ces divers terrains qui propriétaient la paroisse l'église de l'Église catholique, en tant que bouton, ça tourne yon qui se résident à sa trouver titre pour. Par conséquent, Honorable Stanislas, en discussion, et puis les Grecs à l'Église catholique, pour régler la situation de qui est bouton. Selon le représentatif, l'initiative, ça là, qui a porté un pile de support pour Jean Bouton et qui a élevé Valéo et Comina aussi. Eh bien, quand on dit à Primus, Bouton, c'est une petite commune à Soufouillère, c'est une belle petite commune côté où il y a des bons gens qui sont gentils, gentils hommes. Et puis, à chaque fois, c'est une commune qui est comme l'année depuis qu'il a résidé à Bouton. Mais à chaque fois, c'est une commune qui est comme l'année depuis qu'il a résidé à Bouton. Um, Grand-maman, grand-papa et tel yo, et tel la paroisse, paroisse à, à Bouton. Et puis, um, l'église catholique là, c'est yo qui, qui mette ça là. So, il y a des mois depuis que je parle, et puis, c'est prêt là à me souffrir. Et puis, je parle aussi parlé de M. Clem Bob, qui est un homme à, 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 à l'église catholique là aussi. Pour nous, ça va être un monde qui est tout le monde. Représentatif Parlement pour souffrir dit aussi, le plan, c'est pour faire possible pour établir l'autre façon pour que les gens ça servi ce terrain pour affaires commerciales et l'autre développement qui a un bénéfice de Jabouto. Côté les gens qui ont terre pour faire des pour faire l'autre bagaille commerciale, nous avons aussi regardé que nous avons fait un cimetière en bouton. Parce que quand ça, le cimetière souffre, il y a un top petit, il y a plein. Et puis l'année um, um, brisée à l'autre semi-dia um, pour ne pas avoir souffert. Donc so, nous avons regardé côté si nous avons mis un cimetière à un bouton aussi. Uh, nous avons regardé si uh, nous avons mis un petit bouton en subdivision. Mm. Si nous avons fait côté la rue Green Space, côté où nous avons un petit parc, où nous avons un petit fil, un petit bagage pour les résidents à la place là aussi. Je n'ai pas de nourriture. C'est un qui se paye à Caribla qui a observé. Le premier en mois de juin, tous les années. Ça a fait, et puis, une semaine des activités à baptême là. Manger ça qui, pour bonne santé, pour vivre à la vie qui est actif, et pour aussi les informations qui sont sur n'importe quel produit qui est sur vente avant de manger. Là, j'ai un peu d'efforts pour éduquer le public là concerné les produits qui sont bons pour la santé et pour manger ça qui, qui a changé sérieusement le principe du peuple là tenir en façon pour tenir à l'habitude de tenir à manger et pour replacer le mode de manger pour yon qui plie en faveur de la santé. Ça veut dire manger qui n'est pas en pile sick excel. Les consommateurs ne doivent pas pour savoir ce qu'ils ont mangé et ce valet ou ce qu'ils ont mangé et ce qu'ils ont acheté. Alors, l'Organisation de santé mondiale, WHO, a considéré pour tout produit pour manger, porter information pour les consommateurs, ça lit et éduquer quoi yo. Pour eux, ça là, c'est ici et puis le reste, c'est pays caribéen là. Il a fait bon progrès pour qui a donné toute information concernant les bonnes nourritures à les produits qui y ont acheté. Bien souvent, les consommateurs pas qu'à chaque une cerveau pour lire information qui est écrit derrière ces produits ça là. Alors, à présent, ces informations hein, qui est devant ces produits là. Pour n'importe consommateur, ça a ouais, assez bien et ça a lié aussi. Ça a fait possible pour avoir ouais, toutes ces diverses nourritures qui a dans les produits et si il est trop sick, et bien celle et l'autre, ça qui peut affecter sa santé. En parmi ces maladies qui sont plus communes en Caraïbes, et cette ici, c'est puis ça doux, pressure et problème de chair. À présent, il y a un long monde qui a même mangé des produits qui a grossi et qui a grossi trop. Et ça a été causé à pile la mort par diverses maladies. Alors, c'est le principe WHO 
pour que tout produit une information qui yon sali assez bien concernant qui nous qui qui a sur yon produit pour encourager peuple pour manger en pile ça qui plus à bon à santé yo en commerce 60 madame qui oui vendez produit divers articles qui moun ka produit par la main et quatre guide à cette ici vous suivez assistance finance et manger pour qui a duré pour après quatre mois ministère des affaires agricoles vous suivez un chèque aussi pour ces quatre femmes qui le vaté pour aider yo acheter équipement pour opérer habitation agricole plus facilement ça vient est possible par un projet en Caraïbes qui est responsable pour assister et établir résilience pour le climat et le environnement et pour supporter les gens qui plus ni brisés après un désastre. Pour ce cela, il faut adresser l'assistance pour les hommes et les femmes, les jeunes filles et les garçons qui ont besoin de ces degrés d'assistance en neuf pays en Caraïbes et en cette ici aussi. Pour ce cela, c'est pour assister principalement les gens qui sont engagés dans l'industrie touristique et l'agriculture. En cette ici, avec l'autre pays Caraïbes. Plusieurs femmes et les gens qui ont départ à ce business touristique euh, sont fait autant à ce qui passé au résultat des maladies de corona. Alors, il n'est pas possible pour vous vendre des produits parce que les gens ne peuvent pas rester en caille. À part de ça, les hôtels ne peuvent pas rester parce qu'ils ont des restrictions à ce voyage et que ça affecte en l'eau opération et business qui est cadré par ce secteur touristique et agricole. Par exemple, chauffeur taxi, les rivandes, restaurants et puis hôtel. Alors, 1000 personnes dans le secteur touristique sont trouvées affectées à cette ici et puis le reste de Caraïbes là. Pour cette station, pour les femmes qui sont engagées dans le secteur touristique et agricole à cette ici, c'est pour le vendredi, le 28 à mois de mai 2021. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé votre nouvelle là, monsieur, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder et pour vous donner une invitation. Je vous remercie encore. Si vous avez conservé la vie, vous avez pris votre nouvelle à quoi vous avez pris. Je vous remercie pour votre journal. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norville.